I recently put a video out about how you can use AI tools like Relu and so on to be able to streamline the whole development process from an ideation right the way through to final design and maybe speed up your workflow by 50%. I'll link that down below and also in the corner right now so you can check that out. But I want to go back and take a quick look, a dedicated look at the style guide that was recently released inside Reloom AI. And you can try this out in a completely free account. You don't need a pro or paid account to be able to test this out. You can set it up for zero cost. You can follow along with what I'm going to do. So once you've kind of created your account, let's quickly log in, go through the basic process of setting a site up and wireframe again, but I will specifically want to focus on the whole style guide functionality and how they've taken on board some of the things that I previously criticized and integrated those into the whole design process. Still room for improvement, but it's also very, very good where it is right now. So if you don't know, Reloom comes in three stages. You've got your sitemap, which allows you to very easily create a really high level view of a site, including all the pages and the sections for each page. Then there's the wireframe, which is a kind of low fidelity mockup of it. And then finally, the new style guide functionality. All done through AI and some user interaction to allow you to customize and tweak things. So let's quickly go through and let's focus on that style guide. To get started, all you need to do is click on New Project. You then get the primary sitemap dialog box, which allows you to tell it what it's going to be about, what the site is all about. So let's quickly do that. There's my prompt. We're going to say one to five pages is fine. We can add, edit, remove, whatever we need. Let's change the language in this example to English UK and click Generate Sitemap. And straight away, it starts to create that sitemap for us, pulling in what it considers to be key pages. Like I say, you can edit these and remove what you don't want. But if we quickly take a look, you can see each one of these has different sections. You can click and you can edit that section. You can make it global so it becomes kind of templatized. So things like your nav navigation bar at the top and your footer and so on at the bottom, generally they're default created as global sections. So all the pages you create will have those included. You can move these around if you want to, simple as that. Remove what you don't want, keep what you do want, simple as that. So let's say we don't want to have courses. Let's get rid of it. Contact and about us. Well, let's get rid of the about us as well. Let's delete that. So we just keep that really, really simple. Want to generate another one? Click on generate content. Let it pull the rest of that in. And again, you can see there's our global elements for our nav bar and our footer. Okay, so nothing too groundbreaking there that you haven't already seen. Jump over to the wireframes. This is then going to visually realize those in a low fidelity mockup, pulling in what it considers to be design aesthetic elements that kind of complement each other based upon the structure we've set up in the sitemap. All cool. Again, you can customize this if you want to check out my previous video if you want to see more about this or that one I said that covers this in a bit more detail. What I'm interested though is the style guide. So let's select our main page. If we zoom in, you can see there's lots of different sections here. If we come into the style guide now, you can see this has two different sections. The left-hand side is your overall style guide that includes your colors, your typography, and some basic styling information. It is relatively simple at this point in time. On the right-hand side then is the actual visual mock-up based upon the colors, typography, and so on we set inside the style guide. You can have multiple concepts here and you can share these concepts. So we'll quickly take a look at that in a moment. But let's say, first of all, that I don't want to use these colors. So we can easily change those. So instead of this electric violet, we can click on it and change it to what we want. So let's say I'm more interested in a kind of more golden orange kind of color, something like this. Change this color over to something else. We'll go to a sort of darkish blue gray. There we go. So let's say I don't want this third color. Let's just get shot of that. There we go. So we now have a kind of three color design, our neutral shades, our dark blue gray, and our gold color. And then your typography, we can click inside there and we can change this. So you can use ones that they kind of have preset up, or we can just say, skip those. I know exactly what I want. So I'm going to search. I want to use Barlow in this example. So I'll select that from the list that will update. We can change our body. Let's say, for example, we want open sans select that from our list. And you can see in real time, it updates on the right hand side. So we're already starting to customize the colors, the typography and so on. You can do the same with the buttons. You can see we've got these button designs. But again, we can click on this, we can choose whether we want to have rounded corners or go right there to a kind of pill shape. You can change the text inside there if you want to. Let's say I like these kind of slightly rounded corners. We've got a couple of different designs here. Let's say I want to kind of keep this sleek design. We'll choose that from the list of options. Again, you can see it updates in real time. And you've also got your sort of card designs. 
So you can customize how these look. Again, you can control the various different sort of rounded corners. You would generally want to keep these the same as your buttons for that continuity factor. And you can just change these over to something different if you want to. And if you're using cards inside your design, it will update accordingly. So overall, that's the kind of style guide. If again, you want to, you can easily shuffle these. You can change things like the size and the style and the weight and so on. So let's say you want to go a bit more, a bit more bold with these to kind of make them stand out a bit more. Job down, we can do that. You can adjust your styling for your spacing. Do you want to have tight spacing or give it a little bit more room to breathe? Uppercase, you kind of see where this is going. It's all very simple and straightforward. So we can easily just tweak everything we want inside here to get it closer to what we're looking for. Or we can hit shuffle and let it kind of come up with what it thinks is a good combination. So let's take a quick look now at what we have in the main window. Let's expand this out to kind of get a real feel for what this would look like as a real design. Now you'll notice as we kind of go over these sections, we get various different sets of options. We've got these ones to do with colors, shades, images, and so on. So there's a couple of ways in which we can work here. We can click on a section and it will take a look at our color palette and it will adjust things according to that set of styles we set up. You can keep on clicking until you find something you think is nice inside the design aesthetic, or you can simply come down to these options underneath. So our neutral dark, our kind of gold colors, and again, the more colors you have inside your color palette, the more options you'll have here. Let's stick to this kind of dark, but I want to go darker again. So what I can do is I can hold down the command key and that opens up then the various different shades that we have for that color combo. So I want to go darker, I can choose darker. I want to go lighter, I can choose lighter. So I can get exactly what I'm looking for from the overall design. So let's say I quite like the look of that. That looks pretty good, I like that. So let's say I don't like the image that they've used and I want to change that over. You have the option here to edit the image or change the image. Now, for some reason, I can't get this to work when I have the full screen version. You see, nothing actually happens. So all I need to do is go back out of the preview, do the same thing again, find that section, click, and you can see I can upload images. So let's go and change that for something completely different. And you can see now we've got our own custom image inside there. Now, this is where I kind of like one more thing I would like to see here is it's put the image in there, but we've got no control over the position of that image. So we have to spend a little bit of time cropping this, positioning it the way that we may want to use it. But it would be nice if we just had a nice little sort of option here that we could pinpoint exactly what the focal point of the image is, or at the simplest, just be able to move it around and position it where we want. But this is something that in my original testing, they didn't have this functionality, so I'm glad to see they do have it. So it's nice to see we can add our own images in, so we can easily come in and change these over for something completely different and customize everything we want here. Now, once you've kind of gone through all of that and you've customized it to get exactly what you're looking for, then what you can do is you can pitch this concept to your client. So you can click, there's our concept, so well, we can create more concepts easily by coming up here to where it says concept one and say, let's create a new concept. So we now start with a kind of blank slate with a slightly different design, but using those same elements that we had created as part of our wireframe. So the overall layout is still exactly the same. But as you can see, our color palette has changed. So this allows us to change this over between light and dark mode. We can shuffle our colors to have a little play about. So if you've got a client that doesn't really have a color palette or they're just open to suggestion, well, we can use these options until we find what we like. Same thing with the typography, same thing when it comes to the kind of layouts for our buttons and for our card designs. So you can run through these. Now it is only going to go through the pre-built setup so you can, you know, Choose from what you want there. And if you want to lock any of these down, you may say, I like that red. You can lock that down. And then when we shuffle, that red will stay locked in place. When I add another color in, not a problem. Again, we can use that shuffle. So we can keep on shuffling these until we find something we want. And then we can come over to the color chips. And you can see now, because we've got more colors available, we have more options available. So we can easily select these, hold that command key down, change the colors over, and get a little bit more creative. We can upload an image. And we can tweak this design to get what we are looking for. Then you can see we got this as another concept. So we can say pitch concepts. We now have two different concepts. And we can copy this link and share it with our client. I get a full size preview. Pretty nice. Want to check what's looking like on mobile? You can do the same thing there and see exactly what it'll look like on the different basic breakpoints.
So if you want to see how you can use Reloom and what I've shown you here in a little bit more detail as part of an overall process of being able to get ideas right from the sitemap kind of side of things, right the way through to a finished design, ready to launch and speed up your whole process by maybe up to 50%, check out this video and the link in the description down below. But as always, I'll welcome your feedback. Do you use Reloom? Would this get you sort of started testing this out? Maybe even just on the free account. Let me know in the comments section down below. As always, all applicable links are in that description. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts. And until next time, take care.